Hi guys, thanks for stopping by. Now, I know it's been a while since I've posted a video. Um, it's been a rough couple months. Uh, I'm at a new shop here, new digs at my buddy's shop, no longer the previous place. Uh, to tell you the truth, kind of burnt out. Uh, previous shop I was at was six days a week, you know, anywhere eight hours, 10 hours a day. Um, add on trying to do some YouTube stuff, uh, some stuff on my own car on the weekend. And we're not talking oil changes either. The regular days were big jobs, full front end jobs, transmissions all the time. Uh, so many timing belts, um, you know, engine swaps, a bit of everything, every day, big jobs just about. And yeah, it catches up on you. One day, you know, all of a sudden you're driving to work and just you, you feel like you've had no sleep, you feel like you're drunk. Anyways, kind of needed that break. So, uh, I'm going to start trying to post again. And um, unfortunately, this guy here, I didn't get a chance to make a video of it. Um, but you know what, I got a couple of pictures and I got all the components here. So, I kind of tell you what I found and what I found lots of times and some usual stuff. This is an 04 GMC Savannah van. This is the 4.8, but same kind of thing for the 5.3. Um, came in for a belt squeal. No problem. All the time. That's a normal Chevy thing, right? Now, they're a little harder to, to go through and diagnose the belt squeal just because you got the fan shroud, you got that fan that's roaring away. It makes so much noise. But what I try and do is this guy right here. Uh, my stethoscope, I got two stethoscopes. I got the one that's got the, the metal end that I leave on there. And this one here, which goes down to a single hose. So I just use this to kind of narrow down noises just to try and find, yeah, it's around that pulley right there, right? That sort of deal. Of course, on these vans, a little hard to do that. But no problem, they're easy to pull apart. The one thing that's a blessing about the Chevys is the um, the two-part fan shroud. It's wonderful. So, pull it apart. Uh, we got the tensioner. Now, of course, this tensioner's been off for quite a while, so I can't get it to do it, what it was doing before, and what they all kind of tend to do, is yes, the, the pulley bearing makes noise, but also the spring sticks. So, you have it in a position where it normally rides, which would be kind of about there. So, you're gonna put your wrench on it, Let's pretend the belt was on there. It would be sitting in about that position, roughly in the halfway. You put your wrench on there and you release it a little bit, and it should snap back in place. It should have the strength to push that belt to that tension where it should be. And what happens a lot of times is it doesn't snap in place. You kind of release it, and it just kind of sticks to where you you released it to. That will definitely give you a noise because it's momentarily slacking up on the tension. Um, this idler here, that was making some ruckus too. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, um, thing I started off with because both of the belts have been changed, the guy just went to somewhere on the west side. You probably don't know where that is, but either way, went to another shop just to kind of get some belts thrown on there. Still making the noise. Um, on these systems here, these Chevys, the 4.8s, the 5.3s, the AC has a separate belt, separate tensioner. The tensioners are junk. Anytime you change that belt, you're going to need a tensioner. They just are junk. Um, the pulley sees up all the time and not just that, but the springs break and the, the front half will fall right off. They jam up. Anyway, so I kind of figured, hey, good chance it might be that because the noise sounded like, for the little bit of noise that I could hear from this, sure sounded like it was in that bottom corner. So nice thing about those, it is behind the main belt. Uh, but you can still get in there with your 3 8 ratchet. You can still loosen that tensioner off, pull the belt off, tuck it up in behind so it doesn't get wrapped up on the crank, and then run it. Did that, still make a noise. So then just pull stuff apart. That's when I find, hey, this tensioner's kind of crappy. Um, it's definitely going to cause some noise. And the idler pulley is not great. And these are cheap. Do that, throw it all back together, and you know what? When it fires up, it's good for a little bit, but then it starts making some noise again. It doesn't sound as bad, and it takes a, uh, a few seconds or so for the noise to kick in, and it kind of gets a little louder, it gets a little louder, it gets a little louder. And there's definitely uh, a good solid chirp, a good solid squeal. There's something happening there. 
So, this is the part that I wanted to mention. <laughs> and I've seen this many, many times before. On these Chevys, you got your power steering pump, and you got your pulley. Now, the one thing I have seen before, oh boy, thankfully uh, I didn't have to deal with it. It went back to the shop that, that did it. Uh, ended up being a dealership of all things. <laughs> These pulleys need to go on this way. This is how you remove the pulley, by grabbing the snout. I have seen one that somebody put it on backwards. How are you going to grab this pulley if it's on backwards? How are you taking it off? The wonderful thing is most of these, as you can see like this style right here, it's a solid pulley. You can't really get to um, the, the fastening bolts to remove the power string pump a lot of times without taking the pulley off. And this is one of those styles, I forget what kind of car it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. But no, this one was on the right way, but I, it sure looked like the, the pulley was wobbling a little bit. And then I looked at it a little closer. You can see the, the shaft of the pump, and you can see the, the top snout of the pulley. This shaft right here of that pump should be nice and flush with uh, the snout here of the pulley. That's how you know it's on all the way. And then, um, so I tell the boss man, my buddy, okay, it's not on all the way. If you don't have the proper tools, and these, if you have to do these, it's so worth getting the proper Snap-on, Matco, whoever tools. Um, these kinds of guys, these are your installers with nice bearings and your removers they just grab around with nice forcing screws they're solid right these things yes they're expensive but if you have to do these jobs these are worth their weight in gold they make a few knockoffs that just have um, a, a, a stamp a thin stamp steel collar that goes around a couple little uh, uh, plates to, to try and grab this. They don't work. They bind up. I've also seen some people try and use just a bolt and some washers, put a little bit of grease on the washers as a makeshift um, bearing. No. No. Because what happens is when you're pressing this down with that is the, the bolt stops turning and it creates friction with your pulley and then it's not transferring that tension to pressing this pulley on, it's just transferring to that bolt, and guess what happens? Oh, I don't have my light on me. Let me grab a light. <laughs> I told you it's been a bit. Uh, and I told boss man, before, when we got onto this part, that okay, um, I didn't like how this was pressed, so you know what, uh, I can try pressing it on a little bit further and see what happens. Go ahead and pull it apart, get a little closer, and hopefully, hopefully that will focus. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. There's a bit of a bolt broken in there. I grab my installer. Feels like I can kind of grab a thread and it binds right away. It ain't going any deeper. As soon as I, you know, the pulley goes on here, as soon as I go to tighten down the nut, the thing pulls right off. That's when I look in closer and I see the broken bolt. That's why you don't use the bolts. That's why you spend the money on the proper tools because these things work. There's nothing worse. You don't want to do that, right? Guys hoping that maybe it'll be close enough, and no, it's not. I've seen that 
multiple times when this pulley isn't on the proper depth. It might be too far, it might be not far enough, and that puts a little bit of sideways load on the belt. And the thing that's also tricky about that is typically it doesn't make the noise at the power steering pulley, who is the culprit. It typically makes the noise further down the way, so it can be a little harder to find. Make sure if you have a press on pulley, make sure that pulley is perfectly flush. If you use these style installer tools and you just go down, 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 typically you can put these down too far. And then you'll see some of the shaft sticking above that. No big deal. You just take your installer, you unwind it, you go back to your remover and you can see the opening there. And this, of course, is the wrong one. Uh, just like that. And then you can tighten that down while holding the, um, the nut here and pull it to the proper depth. As soon as I do this, didn't change the belt because you know what? Good thing too, sometimes when you got stuff like this, you can glaze that belt. Sometimes you can't get rid of that. But do that and you know what? Noise is gone. So I wanted to share that with you. If you got a kind of a weird um, squeak uh, on a you know 2000s domestic and you know you've gone through, you've, you've changed your tensioner, you've changed your, your pulleys, you've changed your belt, and you just can't figure out what's causing the noise. If you got a press in pulley on a power steering pump, don't forget to look at that because these need to be in line. Usually there's nothing else that goes out of whack um, aside from these. Um, you know what, the uh, AC compressors can go, the, the, the spinning, the um, freewheeling side of the pulley, like just the groove pulley, that can go, but typically if that goes, it makes a lot of ruckus, so you can hear it pretty easily. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, uh, thankfully on these, I've done them so many times that uh, I think the book time gives you like four hours or something silly. And you just take out the whole bracket assembly with the alternator, the power steering pump. Um, everything is one go. You keep the line on the back so you don't have to screw with that in the vehicle. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is trying to line everything up for the first, get the first couple bolts in. There's a little metal bracket at the back. I just kind of leave the, 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 the one bolt loose and then the, the bolt that goes to the, the block there, you leave it a little loose too and you kind of fart with it a little bit. But not a bad job to do. So, uh, long-winded, um, just wanted to mention, don't forget to look at pulley alignment on these press-in pulleys. Oh yeah, one last thing too, because we've been blabbing so much. When you're pressing these on, even if you have the proper tool, because these are a massive interference fit, make sure if these are really crusty in here, Put just a little bit of uh, scotch Bright or just emery cloth in there, just fine stuff. Clean up some of the rust. Give it a spray of some Move It or something just for installation. It'll make all the world because even on these style here, if you try and put it in dry, it's gonna bind. It's not gonna wanna go down. You might break this, you might break this. Give it some installation loop. And on that note, I um, just wanna say thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for not posting anything for so long. Um, I still have a, a bunch of stuff from my last shop to kind of going through, just piece some of that together. Start trying to post again. So, uh, as usual, just want to say thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.